Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to discuss the Spanish tree protocol, which is the fifth chapter in CCNA2, module number five. Uh, going quickly into it, uh, we're going to discuss, let me see. The module objective, explain how STP enables redundancy in a layer two network uh, with redundancy being a, a very important uh, concept in networking. Uh, I think in CCNA one we introduced uh, one characteristic one characteristic of a reliable network, and we talked of fault tolerance. <clears throat> and with fault tolerance, we defined what we call redundancy, that is having multiple parts in a network, so that when one one link is down. No one answer the other link. That is redundancy. Very important concept, but it can come with problems in layer two networks. Uh, that is what we are going to be looking at today and introduce uh, the spanning tree protocol. So briefly, we are going to go through the purpose, the operation, and the evolution of spanning tree protocol. You see in this... Uh, in this uh, module, there is not much configuration. Uh, at this level, CCNA, no configuration required for HTTP. But obviously, as you progress, there are quite a number of configurations uh, that can be made to configure uh, HTTP on a network. Right. Moving forward, let's see. Redundancy in layer two switched network. So redundancy is an important part of um, the design uh, of a network for eliminating single points of failure. I mentioned that uh, with fault tolerance, we have redundancy. It eliminates single points of failure so that the network, one, when one link is down, another link can, can take over. When one device is down, another device can take over. It might be a server. When one server is down, we have another one for redundancy purposes so that it takes over. A router, we can have a, another router for redundancy purposes. You can have multiple links <clears throat> leading to a destination network, redundancy purposes. So it's very important. But as you see, uh, we have something that we call loops, which come with having redundant, uh, which come which comes with having a redundant network at layer two. Right, redundant networks require the addition of physical paths. In having alternate physical parts uh, makes it possible for users to access network resources despite part uh, disruption. However, in an Ethernet switch network, this may cause both physical and logical layer two loops. So Ethernet LANs require loop-free topology with a single path between any two devices. Right. So I think what we can take out from this is the problem with uh, layer two networks. We obviously have a problem which is loops, layer two loops. Uh, keep in mind, layer two loops. Let me see where my pen is not working. Right, loops. Uh, layer two loops. That's the problem. Redundancy is very important, very critical. We need redundancy. But with layer two networks, it comes with this problem, layer two loops. So we're going to look at what a loop is in the next slides, then we'll discuss how do we prevent those loops uh, in, in our layer two networks. All right, layer two loops. So when multiple parts exist between two devices uh, and there is no STP implemented, we have layer two loops or carry. A loop is an ethernet line that can cause continued propagation of ethernet frames until it is disrupted. It can result in MAC address table instability, link saturation, ICP utilization, uh, resulting in a network being unusable. Right? We are going to look at right. We are going to look at what a loop is. We're going to discuss the disadvantages uh, of having a network with loops. So we have those three: MAC address table instability, link saturation, ICP utilization, and overall an unusable network. 
Leto networks uh, does not include the mechanism to recognize and eliminate endless looping frames. IPv4 and IPv6 has a mechanism. So we have uh, this time to leave TTL and we have uh, hope limit field uh, to help with layer three networks so that we have a mechanism which limits the number of times a device can retransmit a packet. We'll look at that as well. As well. Right. Lastly, the Ethernet and Ethernet switches have no comparable mechanism for limiting the number of times a switch retransmits. That's why STP was developed to prevent loops. Right. What is a loop? Simple definition of a loop I can give. Uh, let's look at these three networks. Yeah, let me see. Insert. Let's have a new slide. Yeah. Right, what is a loop? Let's have a network. This is a layer two network. Red dot the three must switches. Right, PC in this switch. We have a PC there. There's a connection here. There's a connection there. There's also a correct connection here. Right, a loop is whereby we have something like this. PC two, PC three. Best way to explain a loop is to use a broadcast. A broadcast or um, an unknown uh, unicast frame, a non unicast frame. We can use these two to explain best what a, or, or what a loop is, right? Using a broadcast. So let's say this is a layer two network where a PC2, PC2 wants to send a broadcast. In fact, it sends a broadcast in the network. So what happens if PC1 sends a broadcast in the network? It means the frame is forwarded to all the ports minus the ingress port where the, where the frame is coming from. So we have a case where a frame is forwarded for, to these ports, right? If this broadcast gets to PC, let's start with PC2. Our broadcast is now here. The switch S1, S2, S3. Our switch number two will receive the broadcast and it will also broadcast it, right? Where will it broadcast? It will broadcast here to PC2. It will also broadcast to S3, right? This broadcast, Rashika open S3, 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 it's a broadcast, it's a broadcast, it's a broadcast, S2, S2, Rashika open it, Rashika open it, it's a broadcaster, Roya Knock. Iroy is a broadcaster, Roya Knock, Roya Knock. S3, Ro broadcaster. There we have our loop. So you see, we have a case in the Panama frames are going to broadcast in our Ethernet network. And that is a problem. And that is what we call a loop. It is the same process, probably, if we have an unknown unicast frame. In an unknown unicast frame, what happens? Uh, can I switch? Resing as zero to frame each. Switch your net, I say, we're not broadcast. Could I check out who has uh, this MAC address? Can I see a MAC address, destination MAC address, mu MAC address table? Yayo. Switch normally process how you're listening and forwarding. You know, there's a MAC address table, MAC address amuna. Uh, then it, it floods. It floods frame kuenda kuma port S minus the ingress port. So the same process happens again. We now have a process here to Panama frames in the network. And that is and that is a loop. And the problems that comes with that. So let's do, let's look at MAC address table instability. The problems that come with that. MAC address table instability. If we have our MAC addressing table, MAC addressing table, let's just say this. MAC addressing tables are need and SOT. If PC sends uh, something there, MAC addressing table, you know, there is a, what is the incoming port and what is the MAC address? Yo Vyaisa. So we have port, the MAC address. Yo Vyaisa, mu MAC addressing table. Yeah. So we have port for PC1, Iruba PC1, let's say it's first one. Okay, uh, pasa. Right, let's say port red is first one. Let's say port, uh, MAC address here in the PC1, right? Yashika Panapa, Arsuzika not Rugenda Coop, 
or it's a broadcast. Ra broadcast kwa. Ra wea pana. Ra broadcast kwa food pana. Ra wea pana. Don't read zoke because the loop. Then it's still we ra papa PC one ear. Ra papa PC one. Ra wea kuno kwa broadcast kwa ra ab. Paruna ya kuno kwa. Ra broadcast kwa. You see. Ringa ra kwa probably. Rungo na ra broadcast kwa ne PC three to some extent. Ra PC three pana. Then we have a port, let's say this is port F02, uh, right? So for port F02, we now have PC3 incoming port in our MAC address, right? Parano si gamunomu, rakuda kubuda futi panapa. Parano buda panapa. Acha ziwa rare PC3 ere, kana rare PC1 pa broadcast. MAC addressing table, kana eru cheka acha ziwa. MAC addressing table, yika cheka PC1 and PC3. That's where some of the instability comes from. And instability, yoyo, where does it lead to? It leads to high CP utilization. Because the switch is not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able Processing power is switch because of loop consideration. It's not frame to be able to do it. Link saturation. Obviously, we can see at some point, my friends, my friends, this link. I want this aesthetic. And that is what the saturation is. We don't need that. E congestion. If my links are done, depend with the dark one, that is definitely congestion. It can lead to our network being unusable because link is not Switch processing power is not as well. Issues that come with uh, having my loops. Right, unlike IPv4, yeah, unlike IPv4, IPv4 in here is not the time to leave TTL. They go to packet, but no move from one router to the other. Ring in a value, run the TTL, ring a root decrease. So let's say value actually attend upon a 10. Zero to go from one router to the other, you know, decrease again upon a 9. You can add to the other router, you know, decrease again upon a 8. Zero to go from up ten my routers, which are ten ops, you know, degrees are going to zero. You got degrees are going to zero. That packet is dropped in the network. So it means at some point, with layer three networking, at some point, a packet, IPv4 packet, it can be dropped. We don't have that. Uh, we don't have that same mechanism go, go layer two. So for for IPv4 is TTL time to leave. For IPv6, we have the hope limit field, which works in the same way. So that number decreases until you ask up on a zero. You ask up on a zero. You go to packet or no for a drop home network. Packet can go drop home network. Zero to affect the network that much. Right. Moving on to, let's see. Let's move to, let me do this. Let me clear this one. All right, let's move to another problem which comes with uh, uh, having my loops, broadcast storms. I think that one explains itself. Pangandru uh, is a broadcast apple. You know, it's a broadcast storm. Pangandru is a broadcast in the previous example, the three must switch. We said broadcast, not easier to explain a loop with. So a loop is starting point. So probably a loop is starting point and got it in a frame, you know, attended it. Now, look at a much bigger network. Switch number one, rugby some broadcast. Switch number two, rugby some broadcast. Switch number three, rugby some broadcast. What happens? Everything is a dimensional machine, marking stability, link saturation happens. CPU, high CPU utilization happens because of my broadcast. And that, what, and that is what a broadcast storm is. So this is an abnormally high number of broadcasts overwhelming the network during a specific amount of time. So this thing, usually you learn, uh, I think Pacheta, Pacheta discuss in security as well. This can be used by uh, an attacker 
in your broadcast storm broadcast storm. This can be used by an attacker intentionally along with a broadcast network mago. Broadcast guys go agawanda. Then it happens broadcast storm. Broadcast storm, what happens at Gawandisa? Network each other down because of my reasons at the tower a high link uh a high CPU utilization a link saturation. Network away get a down. Then probably it's a denial of service. Network just function. So it's a weakness as well. You must broadcast storms. Right? And those are the main uh, major disadvantages of Malaya 2 networks with respect to redundancy. Malaya 2 networks can have redundancy. Two major problems. The broadcast storms. Malaya 2 loops. Never broadcast storms. Right? Layer 2 broadcasts in a network such as ARP requests are very common. Layer 2 broadcasts are typically forwarded. Same thing, forwarded uh, same way as broadcast. So ARP request, this is an example of a broadcast. ARP request, I have this uh, IP address, Nduda Mac address, packet ARP raw broadcast. So that uh, the, 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 the recipient network is responding in the MAC address in your broadcast. So this is just a more specific example. Which type of broadcast are we talking about? ARP broadcast. So a host cost in layer two loop is not accessible to other hosts, hosts on the network. Additionally, due to changes in this MAC addressing table, the switch does not know out of which ports to forward Unicast frames. We explain this one. To prevent these issues from occurring in a redundant network, some type of spanning tree must be enabled on the switches, right? So to prevent Malaya two loops, ne ma broadcast storms, we have what we call the spanning tree, which helps in uh, preventing those. We we'll discuss exactly how it, it does that. So we have what we call the STA, which is the spanning tree algorithm. Uh, which creates a loop-free topology by selecting a single root bridge where all other switches determine a single least cost path. Right, a lot of things to discuss here. We'll discuss a least cost path. We'll discuss this, the root bridge. How does an STA create a loop-free topology? These are the steps which are used by this algorithm. My program and they created this algorithm which we now use in networking to prevent my loops. One, it selects yet not a routing bridge. Number two, it blocks redundant paths. It creates a loop-free topology and recalculates uh, in case of link failure. What are we talking of here? All right. Network area, I'm going to discuss here. Uh, let's just see how a loop is stopped first. A little bit of logic, right? A little bit of logic says probably the vara link here, not vara. Let's say I block this link. Okay, I block this link. It means my broadcast is one. It means PC1, PC2 can still communicate via this link, right? PC1 and PC3 can still communicate via this link, right? Then P this PC2 and PC3 can communicate via this link. So every, every PC in any collision domain given can communicate in this case, even if it got blocker linking. Okay, even if it got removal like this. This is a proper network functional for all three my switches. This link is redundancy only. Could probably link it the dark wire. Then we can use this one. Right? This was for redundant uh, redundancy purposes. Now Tapture out redundancy here is a problem. So what are we going to do? Instead of not having this link, we block it. That is what uh, the algorithm does. It blocks one link. Now, instead of having more broadcast, I will tender it up. This not loop up. Here at this point, frame racer not up and up and up. Are fully because link is running right blocked. Right? Now, the algorithm but recalculating in case of link failure. What happens now? Link is not available. Link is not available. Link is not available. Link is not 
let's say this one rova ra dagwa i rova ra dagwa foot zero to network at ya konso richa pc3 pana so algorithms are no ita erna ita recalculation then i link you know re enable foot i rova ra vurwa in case you could a link right a failure this is opened now rega vurwa network head you know for ita functional pc1 pc2 same link to functional this pc can function then this pc can function with uh, that collision domain so basically that is what stp is all about and the process you could use was you could it not no block a link rip it depends on at root my cost path right it depends on at root my cost path so you see good uh for my links at root over when you talk of cost we are talking basically in simple terms of bandwidth all right let's say or a link speed let's say speed you up at 10 gigabytes speed you up at 100 megabytes and speed yet yeah, this link here yeah, another 100 megabytes all right it does not make sense with the manager you may do no you know of our link in the speed you want because the link in the speed you have a wonder really it's not low cost can i really low cost it means really more preferable in a network I would prefer could the traffic angle you found over link in 10 gigabytes. So the algorithm is responsible for knowing the link in the cost you get to say, which is the link speed. Can I ask you, it then uses those link speeds to select with, uh-uh, we should not be able to block this link. So one of these two should be blocked and I'm under that. in a ring in 10, which we don't have. Uh, Okay, let's say it in every 10 megabytes. It makes sense in dollar to end on of So that we make use of my links and a low cost and a more speed. So basically, in a nutshell, this, this is what STP does and how it works. All right. Here we have a typical example of uh STP in action. The same things I was explaining are the same things that are here. Right. STP is a loop prevent excuse me prevention network protocol that allows for redundancy free while creating a loop free layer 2 topology stp logically blocks physical loops in layer 2 networks preventing frames from circling the network forever right in this case you, we can see to the three must switch is area as usual one two three three and this link in dora block way so the previous explanations the going to be applies to this slide when this one is blocked, we no longer have a loop because a loop ringer root tender out I saw a frame root tender out I saw. But can a panapaga blogwa are going to say tender error. So we have a frame traveling traveling in one direction instead of could at times run an oak, at times run an oak. That should not happen. Right? Recalculation. When you talk of recalculation, as I said before. It's a case you would okay before Tantaka block up. No, we had blocked this one, but now link and got to temper iri Rafa Dagua, Ir Rafa Rata disabled Rafa Rata Dagua Cheshan. So you're not in into a kid, we are no longer access, no longer uh, able to access switch number two. Ir. So, how do we deal with that? STP, you know, the recalculation, you know, recalculator could use a suspended link runs in a Dagua. So link in one another of our air roof and over way roof or over could need to get a functional right looking at um let's go look at steps to a loop free topology right stp builds a loop free topology in four steps so step number one it elects the root bridge it elects the root ports elects the designated ports and elects uh the blocked or alternate ports Right, so these are the steps we are going to discuss uh, a little bit more. Could you tell us how does the algorithm choose, for example, with the root bridge ichi? How does it choose with the root bridge ichi? My ports, pan announce my root ports, and my designated ports, and my alternate ports. How does the algorithm choose with the indoor port, runs root port, and there's no shande root port trash, designated port, there's no shande, blocked port, it speaks for itself blocks traffic ano shande and how are they um i don't choose what say in a network right 
Before we get there, let's introduce what we call the BPDU, the Bridge Protocol Data Unit. Right. This answers the question, how does the algorithm choose Kutineda Road Bridge Chi? Switch uh, network in three mal ma 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 layer two devices. Uh, how does uh, the network know? Could it switch one, two, or a three? Don't enter bridge ready. How does it know? Could my ports and enter my road port? Never designated in the app. We have what we call the BPDU. The BPDU is just a packet. Rengarine, mainly these three things, the rubbish. The bridge priority, the extended system ID, and the MAC address. The BPDU contains information in Otobasira, in Obasira, the algorithm to choose. Kuti Racheta Bridge, Racheta Ma DP, Racheta Ma Ma RP, Racheta Ma Ma BP, Ma Blog Post. How are we going to choose that? So, right. So the BPDU contains all that information. It's just a packet. Within our network, right, three more switches, Edu, as usual. Let's see. Anengar who share information. And that information, basically, in Doran was BPDU. Soon as the Chisquam network, at some point, switch Rakurunov, Runotanga got active, Runotanga send my packets. My packets, you are any information, we will discuss my yellow packets and stuff. I don't information you need in Dinan. Mark address language, priority language. And you see as we go forward, priority, it will be used to determine the root, root bridge in the rip. So the BPDU basically, it is uh, a packet of information in election process, able to determine the Richard root bridge, my ports, which ones in the app. Right. The bridge priority by definition, so let's look at that. It is just a value on all Cisco switches, right, with the default being 32768. It's just a value, right? The, the range is from 0 to 611, 6, 6, 61,440 in increments of 4,096. <laughs> so we can have 0, then we have 4096. 1496 times 2, basically that's what it means. Those are the values, the bridge priority, right? The lowest, door no choose what? A lower bridge priority is preferable. A bridge priority of zero takes precedence over all the other bridge priorities. So in our example, you must switch and go to the In any the lowest bridge priority, do you need a root bridge? Root bridge is sort of the master. In a network, if we, if we can have a master and a slave in a network, the the, the root bridge is the master. And open no secret traffic yes, it end up coming by when, by root bridge, right? Extended I uh, extended system ID. This is another value, which is used to identify VLAN. Could this specific uh traffic even VLAN EP for for this specific B, D, B, BPDU? Traffic aid, this is the packet ray uh, bridge protocol data unit, even VLAN EP. So, Pacha Famba, we see we have STP for different VLANs as well. STP, I should discuss at this point, we are making an assumption negative to VLAN 1, ASA maports either on VLAN 1. So, we are dealing with only one VLAN. But, my networks are no shanda now. You see, and my multiple VLANs. With multiple VLANs, we have this the extended system id you know identify the traffic here do your package the bpdu is in which villain then obviously it has the mac address i don't need to talk much about the mac address right let's go to 13 electing the root bridge six minutes let's go how do how does the network elect with the root bridge she right the sta designates a single switch as the root bridge and uses it as a reference point for all path calculations. All switches in the broadcast domain participate in the election process. The switch with the lowest BID will become the road bridge. Right. So you have to mention that bridge ID you value at that default is three two six three two seven. 
I don't know what they why they have the way they had nine there seven six eight. This is the priority. So I'm sure this value was supposed to be for the priority priority as well. Right. That's the BID. The switch with the lowest BID becomes the root bridge. Because some network here, you know, in the lowest BID, the priority value is this one. 24577. Seven. That's the priority value. Right? For the sake of not confusing one, BID is sort of a combination near priority value and the MAC address. Let's just say the MAC. That's the bridge ID. A combination of the priority value and the MAC address. So if I look at the priority value pan up, it's lower than all the switches. So obviously, evidently, that one becomes the root bridge. Right? We have my cases as well, Egoti. Root bridge EO is it's default. Can I default? Security is no longer this. Probably it's the same name and among my switch are. Now we have a tie. How do we then choose with the in either our root bridge chi? We still look at the lowest BID. Panapat in a tie, we still have the MAC address to look at. We find the switch in the lowest MAC address. And that one becomes automatically the bridge ID. So let's say in this case, I, I, my, my priority values, SMA default, Agafanana, what becomes our bridge ID in that case? So I can see we have 00A, 002, I have 001 here, I have 003 here. So this one becomes our root bridge because in doing the lowest MAC address. Basically, basically that's it, right? Moving on to determining the root path cost. Right. To choose a root bridge, uh, let's just go back to Zinza Trufa and I'll go determine. Right. We are going to determine, this is the process, the steps to a loop-free topology. We have determined uh, election, we have determined the root bridge. After election, we elected the root bridge. Now, Tabda Kwenda Kuno elect my root ports. How do we elect my root ports? Electing my root ports begins with understanding you know, the root path cost. And the root path cost, uh, let me see, is determined by the sum of all the individual port costs along the path from the switch to the root bridge. So the root path cost is determined by a cumulative value of all the individual port costs along the way to the root bridge. What is the root path cost? The root path cost table E, it summarizes what the root path cost is. Basically, the root path cost is, a, I don't know how to say proportional. Let's say it's linked. It's linked with the link speed, right? These are the default values, right? For a link speed, there are 10 gigabytes per second. For STP, the cost is two. For a link in a one gig, you can see the cost you know increase. For a link in a 10 megabytes, the cost is 100. So the cost increases as, so this is inversely proportional. As the link speed increases, the cost decreases. All right, so my link speed is added on my 10 gigabytes and I'm going to lower cost. And that is what the path cost is. So can I switch redu to Gafamba, let's say from here, three my switch edu as usual. Right. Let's say Panabatine 10 gig, Panabatine 100, Panabatine 10. Right. Traffic in Gafamba, let's send the document get any PC in Panaba. Let's say this is PC3, let's say this is PC1. Traffic in China and a Panaba. Cost in Panama Pane 10 megabytes up is 100. Cost Pana. Right? Is 100. Cost in 10 gig is 2. Cost in 100 megabytes is 19. Right? The Gadawenda and Ugno Kuenda PC3. Cost Young is 100. The Gadawenda and Ug. Cost Young is 19 plus 2, which is 21. Which route will traffic Yango prefer to go to? In any personally, I would prefer to go using Ruti Ruki. Chero Rugu, she can never switch Panama, but also in the switch. I'll prefer this same route. Why? 
because kune ma speeds akati gure. So STP, the algorithm itself, it also uses the same logic to determine good uh, path in a least cost kuenda root bridge. Ichi and that is used to determine kuti the root port the rip. And consequentially, those not determine afuti kuti designated port in the rip. Alright. So I can see we have less than one minute here. Uh, let me end it at this one. We join in the next session and we continue.